It is Tuesday, August 19, 2025. Thank you for being part of this weather community. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. All eyes on Hurricane Aaron. Winds right now at 115 miles per hour. So we're looking at about 180, 185 kilometers an hour. The thing with this is the wind field is really going to be expanding. Even as the interior winds, the core winds start to weaken, you get that wind field really getting wider. So what I want to do in this uh, video is zoom down into the Carolinas with the rain and that wind field. Field, cover the storm surge. So we're going to have a zoom down look. I want to show you the waves, different vantage points, huge swells all around from the Caribbean up toward Canada. We'll cover that. And then two new tropical waves. So this is Aaron pulling away from the Turks and Caicos, pulling away from the Bahamas. It did make that turn as expected. And then we work our way out here. So here's Aaron. Here we are in the Caribbean. Uh, and you get a look at these two tropical waves. So never take my eye off the ball watching what's next overnight, though. I have not been seeing any substantial development or changes in both of these. So thank you for your patience in this video because we need to cover that as well. So we'll get to all the different spots and not leaving anyone out. And then my promise to you is tracking a storm start to finish. I don't want to just uh, pass us by a certain area and then forget it. Uh, so watching this, Aaron, we're going to watch this the whole way through up through the Atlantic region of Canada on track, making more of that turn. Bermuda, a little bit better shape. The heaviest winds are going to stay off to the west as expected. This will split uh, Bermuda and uh, North Carolina. But with that expanding wind field, especially for the Outer Banks of North Carolina, tropical storm force winds in watching that storm surge. And then as this is off uh, Thursday night, uh, off toward the southeast of Cape Cod and the islands, still going to be some strong uh, winds around. You'll know something is kind of out there. Dangerous seas, Nantucket gusty winds, Martha's Vineyard watching back toward uh, Cape Cod as well for some uh, gustier winds. But it's not like a Hurricane Bob. It's not move or Glory. It's not just uh, moving into New England. It'll be offshore of New England and then looking to be mainly offshore of the Atlantic region of Canada. But it's making even more of that turn moving to the northwest right now very slowly as it kind of feels its turn. Sometimes they uh, start uh, going slowly moving to the northwest at seven miles per hour. Then as it lifts in latitude, that's when it accelerates, gets caught up in those westerlies, the westerly kind of overall flow, the jet stream. And that's why it starts to accelerate, then eventually back toward the North Atlantic. Tropical storm watches will be changed to warnings, most likely, back through the Outer Banks of North Carolina for good reason. We'll get some gustier winds, but the biggest concern will be that storm surge. And you see it here, really south of Corrala, get back toward Duck, watching Kitty Hawk, uh, Nags Head, for example. That storm surge around two to four feet, some very low-lying areas. That's why those evacuations have been ongoing. It's not that there's going to be a giant hurricane moving in. There's not going to be hurricane winds here, uh, but there's going to be that rise in water, especially because that wind field that I'm about to show you is going to be so very large, so very uh, prudent to uh, uh, heed any of those evacuations if you need to, especially uh, you get over toward uh, 64 as you're trying to exit very low-lying areas uh, right by, uh, say, Alligator uh, River, for example. Uh, so again, some spots really take on some water here, uh, no doubt. We've seen that with winter systems in this area uh, in significant beach erosion. So it is on track. Again, here's Bermuda staying. The core of it stays offshore, which is just uh, uh, amazing. That is just so, so very, uh, uh, very grateful of that. I'll put it uh, that way. Now, as we go out in time here, a few fluctuations. This is uh, two days out in time right here. It could actually restrengthen a little bit, and then we'll start to see it weakening because as it lifts to the north, it starts to lose its tropical characteristics, runs into some uh, cooler water. So there'll eventually be that weakening. But over the next uh, day to two days, the wind field is just really going to spread out. Now, as far as monitor mode goes, again, we are not in action mode as we work our way uh, back toward uh, uh, Newfoundland uh, and the Avalon Peninsula, but just monitoring to see if this gets uh, a little bit closer. We are going to see some uh, stronger winds, the rain mainly staying south and east, which is actually a bad thing. We don't need a hurricane moving in, but this area has been so very dry. Uh, so again, this is not going to bring rain to New Brunswick, uh, Prince Edward Island, even Nova Scotia, most of the action all staying offshore. We'll cover that in just a moment. Let's get to this. Here we are in the Bahamas. Outer rain bands just clipping by the central and southeastern Bahamas today. Turks and Caicos will see this pulling away. But as this lifts to the north, you get these big feeder bands, so we may get a little additional rain over toward the Dominican Republic uh, for today. But again, this is lifting away from Haiti, the DR. But as we work, I'll zoom down here in a second. As we work our way to the uh, north, you can see the Outer Banks of North Carolina. The core of this is off 
offshore. Here's South Carolina, here's Georgia off toward the east, and here's Bermuda. Bermuda, we're looking in much better shape. That's why uh, we were in monitor mode, again, not to action mode over the last several days, uh, because again, this is going to stay mainly off toward the west of Bermuda. This here is by the time uh, we work our way into Thursday. Now, here's a zoom down look, so you get over toward Nags Head, uh, uh, Kitty Hawk here. Here's 64, you get over toward uh, Catter uh, Hatteras, and then uh, Cape Lookout. This here is by Wednesday, so as we get into tomorrow evening, there's the core of the hurricane. You can see how close it is, but the hurricane conditions offshore, but these outer rain bands moving in, but the water piles up, the big wind field, so we get the water piling up with that surge and that significant beach erosion. And then by the time we get into late hour on Thursday, it starts to pivot away. So you get over toward uh, Salisbury, for example, uh, over toward uh, Ocean City, uh, both New Jersey and Ocean City, uh, Maryland, all of this moving away, uh, but again, monitoring those very high seas uh, that will be around. So this isn't going to work its way into uh, Delmarva or anything like that. It is on track, but the larger winds, that's going to be uh, 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 an issue, right, with not only the waves, but that beach erosion. Now here's Bermuda. You see it's staying off toward the west of Bermuda and then going out in time here to show you what happens down the road. This is by Thursday. See Cape Cod and the islands right here staying to the south and to the east. But with that wind field, well, some gusty winds could be a little bit of a backup on the Cape Cod Bay with the winds eventually shooting in out of the uh, northwest so on the north side, uh, watching that. And then this kind of pivots its way. It may clip the Avalon Peninsula with some rain. I'm still not quite sure uh, exactly the angle this is going to take. But you see on Saturday, as it transitions out of a tropical system into a subtropical system, most of it is still running to the south and east. Now, here's the big picture with the wind field. And then I want to zoom down in into the Carolinas uh, with these winds. And you can see the scale kilometers an hour and miles per hour on your screen. But just the point here is just the large wind field. The white shading would really be the tropical storm winds. And you see because of that wind field right along the coast, we're going to have those tropical storm wind gusts of 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers an hour. So we'll get those gusts even here by the time we work our way into Friday. I mentioned that over toward Nantucket, there'll be gusty winds. Winds could gust up to about 50, but the core of this is staying over water. That's the hurricane force winds. Uh, so very fortunate uh, about that. The, the hurricane winds are staying over water. This is not taking a weird turn or anything like that. But you can even see by Saturday how large that wind field gets. And we'll see just how close this gets uh, to uh, Newfoundland as we work our way down the road. Now here's a zoom down look. Uh, so we swing back toward this is uh, by Thursday morning. That's when the winds will start to really be howling around as we work our way into uh, tomorrow night into uh, Thursday morning. So uh, some of the gusts are on 50 miles per hour, that white shading there. But that's the hurricane stuff there. Those reds, the oranges, the yellows, that is staying offshore, but close enough to give us that surge and the strong winds. And again, from New Jersey uh, over toward uh, Delmarva and then swinging south, watching uh, Virginia. Uh, we'll see a little bit of a backup too, watching that over toward uh, parts of the uh, Tidewater area. Uh, but the hurricane winds here, this is by Friday morning offshore, but we'll see that flow still coming down out of the north and then those gustier winds for parts of Cape Cod and the islands. Now I want to show you two different vantage points. First to the north and then we'll swing down to the Caribbean with how large of a wind field this is. Look at the wave heights and how all of this expands out. Here's meters, feet on the right hand side of your screen. You can stop this if you want, pause it and take a look at the winds depending on uh, our winds rather, the waves depending on where you are. And we're looking over six meters, 30, 40 plus feet over the uh, open waters. And that's why I was mentioning the hurricane conditions staying over the water, so very critical, right? Uh, because if this was moving in, uh, this would be uh, absolute uh, uh, of a beast of a system. But watch how this expands. Here we are in the Caribbean. Here's the, the Gulf is very quiet. But as this lifts to the north and new tropical waves start to uh, work in, look how the swells kind of reemerge back through the Bahamas northern sections of uh, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, U.S., British Virgin Islands, Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla. As we work our way into Saturday, uh, dangerous uh, kind of a Atlantic uh, passageways in through here. So as it lifts away, just a heads up, if you have any interest on the water, we're still going to be dealing with those swells. Now look at this, these two new tropical waves. Here we are, Dominica, Barbados, get back through St. Lucia, Trinidad, watching this one here and another one here. Now in the short term, I'm not seeing much development, right? 
longer term, there could be some development. So since these haven't really developed a whole lot, which is good, we're just kind of monitoring the rain and just kind of monitoring these as we uh, go forward. So we take a look at this one coming off the coast of uh, Africa. Models are latching a little bit more onto that for some development. These always look scarier than they are because when you see some of these uh, models, you're like, hey, this is moving right at us in the uh, Caribbean, but it's not telling us how strong it's going to be as of now. Uh, in the short term, not seeing some strengthening, but keeping a very close eye on those water temperatures that are so very warm. So as it stands now with the two tropical waves out there, Anguilla through Barbados, we're just holding in monitor mode. We're not taking action, not seeing development yet. If I start to see some development out of these over the next 24 hours, that may change, but this will bring us some additional flooding. So let me start here and then we'll zoom down for us in the uh, Caribbean with the rain. So it's this spot in here. This is the first tropical wave. Here's that second one, Southern Islands of the Cabo Verde Islands. Uh, that's where there could be some additional flooding with upwards of 100 millimeters of rain or four, uh, four inches of some rain. Then as we work forward, this is a very August looking picture. One tropical wave here, another one here, another one coming off the uh, coast of Africa. This is common to see multiple tropical waves and it's my job on the scenes to really dissect not the, just the models, the environment, to see what may try to develop. But on Friday, that first one will at least bring us some additional rain, parts of the eastern and northern Caribbean. So that is the first one. And you see that second one that's sitting off the coast of Africa now, not showing a lot of development. And there's a third one back behind it. But I want to caution, uh, things can, we know this, things can spin up uh, pretty quickly. So I'm watching these ever so closely just to see if they start to feed off of some of the uh, warm water temps. And we know those water temperatures are very warm. Now in the wake of air and water temperatures will cool down just a touch, relatively speaking. They go down a little bit, uh, but this time of year, they don't go down uh, a ton. So it's not really a huge factor, uh, but where air and, uh, passes over, water temperatures briefly go down a smidge, uh, but that's not really a long-term impact uh, this uh, time of year. So uh, here's that closer look. So you get back through the Bahamas, watching out for some of the uh, leftover rain, far outer uh, rain bands, scattered areas of rain in Central America. America hit or miss for us in Jamaica, Haiti, uh, the DR Cuba. We could get a couple spotty showers, Trinidad a few. But later on Wednesday, this is tomorrow, here's that first tropical wave. Then by Thursday, it gets closer to Barbados, mainly still off toward the east of us at that point. Then as we work our way Thursday into Friday, that's when some of the rain comes in. So again, just holding in monitor mode right now, but there's that additional rain that will be possible. Uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, Montserrat, Saba, some uh, additional rain. We'll be watching that through the British and U.S. Virgin Islands. Same thing as we work our way into Saturday. But as I mentioned, I need to keep a close eye on the environment above our heads and the water temps uh, because sometimes these things could spin up a little more, and that's why uh, we're in monitor mode. Uh, uh, just to keep a very close eye on this area that will bring some additional rain. And then we'll watch those other tropical waves that are back behind it. As far as the rain goes, the core of rain, of course, with Aaron, where the hurricane conditions are the center of this, uh, the core of that rain sitting offshore, but some spotty showers and storms, not as much Cayman Islands. Could see a couple popping up, as I mentioned, Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, the DR. We may get a quick 25 millimeters of rain or an inch of rain if we happen to get it. Not a lot as of now. St. Martin, St. Bart's, uh, for example, but we'll see that chance of rain increasing Friday into Saturday with that tropical wave that will be moving in. Uh, as we work our way to the south, kind of hit or miss, uh, Martinique, uh, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada, and then we get our, or we swing our way back through Suriname, Guyana, Venezuela, few areas of rain. Still a little bit more uh, southern uh, Panama, western Costa Rica, western Nicaragua, and then interior Honduras uh, and El Salvador. Rain chance has gone up a little bit higher. Some spots dry, but but others getting dumped on where we can see some spots over 100 millimeters of rain. Western uh, spine rather uh, more so of uh, Mexico. That's where we'll see some of that rain and then scattered about across the southeast U.S. And again, heaviest rain uh, up toward North Carolina with air and stays offshore. Just getting clipped by those outer rain bands. The surge though and those strong winds and the erosion, those are some of the issues. So 30% chance of a pop-up shower storm for us today in Jamaica. 40% chance tomorrow. Cayman Islands, we're mainly on the dry side. 
over the next few days. Passing shower possible for us in Trinidad and Tobago, 30% chance over the next two days in Barbados, and an isolated chance of a shower working our way back through St. Lucia. Just a 20% chance today in Grenada. We are mainly dry, 20 to 30% chance. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, isolated shower possible in Martinique. Rain chance staying very minimal in Dominica. We're watching off to the east for that higher chance of rain by the end of the week and the weekend. Same thing in Guadeloupe. We swing to the north. Rain chance on the small side. Can't rule out a couple passing showers today. 30 to 40 percent chance though. Antigua, Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Montserrat. Rain chance staying low. 20 to 30 percent chance the next three days and Gwil and St. Bart's, but Friday into Saturday, that's when it will go up. Friday into Saturday, it'll get higher as well. St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. Isolated shower storm back through Puerto Rico today. Isolated shower possible. British and U.S. Virgin Islands, 30 to 40 percent chance back through the Bahamas as a whole, but we know those outer rain bands kind of clipping by uh, the central and southern Bahamas at this point as Aaron moves away. Very dangerous seas. Rain bands still a, a potential today, but the heaviest weather moves moving away from the Turks and Caicos. Thank you for all of your updates. 30 to 40% chance in the Dominican Republic. Just a 20% chance tomorrow and Thursday across Haiti. Very hot. 20% chance in Belize. Belize, we've been generally on the quiet side. Aruba, Carousel, Bonaire, that rain chance staying relatively low over the next few days. Starts to go up some though by the end of the week. Uh, Guyana and Suriname, little uptick in some of the rain. Better chance of getting some of those scattered showers. 30 to 40% chance of mainly late afternoon thunder storms back through parts of Cuba. Costa Rica and Panama, I mentioned some of the areas dealing with some of the rain. Same thing, Nicaragua. We work our way back toward uh, Honduras. Rain chance holding at about 40%. Elevated though, watching out even for that mudslide potential. Guatemala and El Salvador the next few days. Mexico City, by the time we hit Thursday, rain chance goes back up to a 50% chance. Yucatan Peninsula, we're looking at a 30% chance. Rain chance builds some by the end of the week in uh, northern Colombia, and it starts to build a little bit as well uh, back through uh, northern sections of Venezuela. And Bermuda, heaviest weather, will be staying off toward the west with regards to Hurricane Aaron, but of course the high seas and some of those gustier winds. So Aaron working more to the north, high and dangerous seas, monitoring the outer banks of North Carolina, keeping an eye on points to the north, New England, and the Atlantic region to Canada. Two new tropical waves closely watching for development and if one of these does develop further, uh, could eventually get a name. The next name on the list is Ferdinand. So thank you for sharing this information, being part of this weather community uh, and uh, be safe if you're getting caught in some of these gusty winds. Have a good day ahead.